The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA. One of the hosts of the last three brain cells and the host of um, Between Terminus and Oriented Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice and also those um, watching on Oriented Television and also those um, watching on YouTube. Um, a lot to talk about this week. Obviously, we're down to the final four um, in volleyball. I mean, we're down the quarterfinals in volleyball, um, down the final four in football. Um, a couple of teams do remain. Um, obviously, um, we're going to recap um, Berkeley's regional championship run in volleyball and also Clarkson's regional over at White Lake, um, over at Lakeland. Um, a lot to look at. Um, and then, of course, obviously for football, we got um, Clarkson and Rochester Adams. We're going to recap that one. And then also the um, groves Livonia franklin matchup where that was a heck of a game um, there over in Livonia. Um, and we're going to talk about their um, – Future match, of course, Clarkson gets to take on Caledonia, and then um, and then um, Groves takes on Warren of the South in Division Two. So a lot to talk about this week here on the pod, um, surrounding those games. Let's go to volleyball first. Obviously, um, when you look at volleyball, um, you know a lot of people look at um the description of um, you know when you look at teams that have have bet building the program right and i think what they're doing at berkeley is you know building that program right um <clears throat> making the next step and i think berkeley's definitely done that um the bears ended up winning their first ever regional championship um with a win in the semifinals knocking off detroit cast tech and then also knocking off um growth points out in four games um to win their first ever regional titles at Detroit Renaissance. Um, now, Detroit Renaissance is a place where, you know, Berkeley's had a ton of success. I mean, let's look at volleyball districts. Um, last season, they won there. Um, girls basketball, of course, we know about the the um, upset in the district final. What they did at Detroit Renaissance, that game was at Detroit Renaissance. And then the, and then the regional, um, they ended up winning that regional. They Won the district on their home on their home floor, knocked off um, you know, knocked off um Warren Mott, and then knocked off Royal Oak um to get there, um, <clears throat> and then um, and then of course winning against Growth Point South that was a big 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 win for them at the time. Um, when you look at Berkeley, obviously a lot of experience um <clears throat> for what they've done, obviously, um, you know, building this foundation up building the foundation of the program, um, you know, putting everything together, um, you know, and, it, and it's been clicking for the Bears. Obviously, you look at players like Ava Beard who on that team. You got Sawyer Jones. Sawyer Jones has been really been playing outstanding for Berkeley. Um, so when I look at the Bears um, right now, um, you know, I mean, like they're right now on cloud nine right now. I mean, this is a t program that really hasn't, been anywhere I mean they really I mean they won a district title last year but in the past they've really been struggling as a program and now you look at them and say okay you just won a district title you just won a regional title um now you got a um now you got a program you know that's on the rise um program strength looks to be on the rise there um they were in the thick of the white title race this year um before falling to Rochester, of course, um, that was a crazy matchup there. Um, so for Berkeley, they're riding on cloud nine right now. And, you know, when you look at the Bears coming up in the future, um, you got to look at what Berkeley is. Here's a team that's got to come in playing with nothing to lose and everything to gain. And, you know, heading into the state quarterfinal matchup. Um, there's going to be a lot. I mean, they, they got a very tough matchup looming with Northville. Um, coming up in the quarterfinal. Um, that'll be taking place at Royal Oak Middle School. Um, so that's very interesting there. Um, the fact that um, they're going to be playing at Royal Oak Middle School um, for a state quarterfinal game. Um, when I look at this matchup here, and, and it's a difficult matchup for Berkeley 
going up against Northville. Of course, Northville, we know, has the volleyball background, the volleyball protege. Um, they've knocked off um, some really good powerhouse programs in the postseason. And Novi, of course, they just completely obliterated Novi um, in the district final. And then in the district semifinal, they knocked off um, Farmington North Mercy. Of course, Mercy, well coached under Coach Loretta Vogel. Um, you know, they have some good players. They've always have been really good um, talent wise. And you look at that situation there for Berkeley, it's going to be very difficult for them. And, you know, Northville, obviously, you know, they were the team that knocked off Birmingham Marion in the Beast of the East tournament. Um, but for Berkeley, the key for them is to make sure that they're not in, um, you know, that they're not, they got to stay loose. I mean, they got to stay loose and don't get tight. And we, I mean, the moment they get tight is when the moment, you know, bad things happen. And that's where I see with Berkeley is, you know, they've got to stay loose in that matchup because if they get tight, you know, could it go three games? Maybe. I, I, it could possibly go three games. I mean, that's pretty much where I expect it will go. Um, I would expect a um I think it's a it's a difficult matchup to say the least for sure. Um <laughs> when you look at this matchup, um I think Berkeley right now, um, you know, Berkeley they gotta come in they're coming in with house money. I mean, they're that's really what it is. I mean, you know, obviously, you know what I mean? Like, you know, they're the team that's not supposed to be here. Um, They're the team that, you know, that, you know, supposed to be, Um, you know, people are going to say, well, who is supposed to be there? I mean, you got Gross Point South has been really good all year. Um, Then you have, um, you know, and then like, you know, I mean, like, they, I mean, like Gross Point South, they won their district title um, on their home field, um, and basically in their home, on their home court. <clears throat> And then getting to the district final, I mean, that says a lot right there. It really does. So, when you look at this matchup, and I think this is really interesting. Um, you know, uh, you know, can Berkeley hang with Northville? That's the big question. I know a lot of people, like Drew Ellis, I know very well. I don't think he's going to get Berkeley a chance, and, and rightfully so. I mean, if Berkeley has any chance in this game... They're going to have to really expose, you know, Northville's, um, I think, back line. I'm not, I haven't been really impressed with the Mustangs' back line. Um, yes, they got a, they got a very good libero who transferred in from Punchel's Mercy. Their size is really good up front. I mean, <clears throat> it's going to be a tough matchup. So we'll see what happens there. I think it'll be really interesting to say the least how that's going to be. And we're going to see what happens. Um, but for Berkeley, it's a difficult matchup for them taking on Northville. They're going to have to probably, if they're going to have to play their best volleyball game. Because if they do, I think they got a good chance. Um, they got a good chance, but they got to have Northville play one of their worst games of the year. And I don't know if Northville pla hasn't played a terrible game yet. And it would be something if Northville did struggle in this game with Berkeley. And can Berkeley take advantage? That is going to be the key. I think familiarity is going to help, obviously. Of course, Berkeley plays, um, they play Royal Oak. Um, they're pretty close by. I mean, Royal Oak Middle School, um, you know, it used to be the old, it used to be Royal Oak Don Darrow, um, before Royal Oak merged, um, uh, with Royal Kimball and Royal Oak Don Darrow. Um, so that's going to be really interesting right there. Um, pretty much I, what I'm looking at here is going to be is, um, I think that this matchup, if it goes three, you know, and I think a lot of people are going to expect this to go three um, with Northville routing Berkeley. You can't really take away, you know, you can't take away the accomplishments of Berkeley's um, volleyball program, especially what they've done this year. Um, yes, they didn't win the league title. They didn't win the white. Um, to me, if this, if there's a program that I think that needs to go to the red this year and for next year for volleyball, I think it's Berkeley because Berkeley and Rochester, I think, would make a lot of sense if they were to go to the red next year. Um, curious to see how Berkeley would match up against teams like Clarkston, um, Lake Orion, um, usually the perennial powers in the OA. Um, Adams has been really good. Stony Creek's been really good. Um, you know, so when you look at, when you look at this matchup here, um, 
it's going to be very difficult, to say the least. So we'll see what happens um, for Berkeley in that mat in that regional going up against a really good, um, you know, Northville program on Tuesday night. So that'll be really interesting to see what happens there in that matchup. It's a tough matchup though for them. So we'll see what happens there going forward there. Um, Stony Creek season came to an end against Birmingham Marion. Um, you pretty much a lot of people knew that was coming. Um, you know, Stony Creek they fought. I mean, they they I didn't expect them to win a district title like they did. Um, and they end up winning one. So give credit to the Cougars, Coach Ross Talbot. Um, just ran into a very good Birmingham Marion team. And then just shocked how they knocked out Macomb, Dakota in three games. I mean, like, also, I mean, that tells you how good Birmingham Marion is um, with the way that they are right now. The defending Division One state champions, well-coached under, um, well-coached. Um, it's going to be a tall order, um, definitely for Clarkston. Um, in the um, regional, um, in the state quarterfinal, um, that'll take place over at St. Clair Community College in Port Huron. Um, Clarkston, you know, when you look at the Wolves' regional pass, I thought, you know, I was really shocked how they did against Lakeland because I didn't expect them to go and just dominate Lakeland like they did in three games on their home floor. I know they were motivated from last year. Um, Obviously, you know, when you look at Clarkston this year, um, they got a lot of motivation this year. Um, playing for their coach, Allison Smith, who was battling breast cancer. Um, but when you really look at what happened in this game was, you know, Clarkston, they were motivated. That really was, it was against Lakeland. I mean, I thought, you know, I really thought the game against Lake Orion in the district final, you know, that was a five-game classic. Um, then you probably don't know how Clarkson would do against Lakeland. Of course, Lakeland, let's not forget, this is the same program that eliminated Clarkston in the district final last season. So when you really look at Clarkston, the motivation was there for them. I mean, it clearly was there for them when, um, you know, that, to go in there, to take on Lakeland, get some revenge on Lakeland for what they did to them. I mean, really, that's what it is. So, when I look at Lakeland, um, you know, people are going to say, well, Lake, Lakeland has seven seniors on that team. They're veteran heavy. So, when we look at it here, you know, so it was really impressive that Clarkson just went in there and just dominated Lakeland. That's really what it was. Um, and then on the other side, you had Grand Blank and Davison. Um, Grand Blank had no issue with Davison at all. Um, setting up a regional final matchup between the Wolves and the Card and the Bobcats, and you knew where that was going. I mean, everybody knew where that was going. I mean, you know, Grand Blank literally had no chance in that regional final against Clarkson. They really didn't. Um, of course, when you look at Clarkson, obviously Paige Gennebrook, um, I mean, Kayla Kogan, um, she's really been playing really well in the, um, in the postseason, of course, she was very instrumental in the Lake Orion match. Um, also in the Lakeland match as well. Um, I really think when you look at Clarkston right now, this is a team right now that's motivated. They're hungry. They're determined. I mean, obviously playing for Coach Allison Smith, you know, it's been battling breast cancer. I mean, you know, and I know that she didn't tell the team, you know, about it, you know. You know, but... um. But they're playing for, you know, that's, and anytime you play for a cause, that makes you more dangerous because you're playing for something. You know, you look at last year, of course, Birmingham Marion and girls basketball, you know, Coach Mary Ciceroni, this was the last season. And I know how hard Birmingham Marion played for her in that game against West Bloomfield. So it's pretty, it's similar, you know, it's pretty similar, you know what I mean? But knowing Coach Allison Smith, you know, she's a fighter. She is a fighter, and, you know, I wish her the best of luck battling this um, terrible disease, um, and it is a terrible disease. Um, let's look at the matchup between Clarkson and Birmingham Marion now. Of course, we mentioned earlier, this is going to take place at um, St. Clair Community College. It's in Port Huron. Um, been to their gym. I mean, actually, it's a pretty nice gym. I mean, you know, I mean, like, it's a, it's going to be an interesting matchup, obviously. I mean. Yes, Birmingham Marion's been very good all year long. They've been dominant. They've been like, you know, like 
But when you look at it here, their only loss this year was the Northville. I mean, in a BC East tournament. So it's, a, it's at a neutral site. Burmy and Marion won their regional on their home floor. And it was pretty dominant, to say the least. It was dominant. <laughs> and give credit where credit's due. Um, when you look at the um, Mustangs, I mean, they've been really good all year long. I know they got a very good player, Mackenzie Swanson. Um, they got a couple others who are really good as well. Um, but when you look at this matchup between Birmingham and Marion and Clarkson, I know these two teams have played during the year, and Birmingham and Marion's had Clarkson's number. But always something, there's something different with Clarkson come postseason time. There always has been. And, you know, when these two teams play, it can get real tight. And I expect it will be tight. I'd be shocked if this was a three-game sweep. I'd, I'd be really, really shocked if this were a three-game sweep because of the fact that Clarkston really, you know, the fact that I know how prideful Clarkston is. I mean, they are a very prideful team. And, you know, when you look at the matchups, yes, the matchups don't favor Clarkston. They really don't. Um, but I think the key in this game is going to be is can the Wolves, you know, overcome – Survive the storm early because you know that there's going to be a storm early with Birmingham Marion. Because you know, as well as I do, because Birmingham Marion, the key for them is the start. Because if Birmingham Marion gets up, keeps the start, gets under control early, you know, they're, they're on their way to dominance. Whereas Clarkson's virtually the same thing. I mean, Clarkson, you know, same thing with them. So I think whoever wins, I think the first 10 serves. First 10 points, I think, is the key to determine the matchup. To determine who's going to be up and who's going to be down. Now, yes, Birmingham Marion's been there before. The experience factor. The proven experience. The national rankings, you know. Sometimes when you look at things here, it is dangerous being the favorite. And there's reasons why I think being the favorite, you know, doesn't always work out pretty well. It doesn't. I mean, that makes you... You're better being the hunter than the hunted. And I think when I look at this matchup here, Birmingham Marion is the hunted and Clarkson is the hunter. <laughs> and obviously I know what the state wants, you know, usually, you know, a lot of people look at this matchup and say, okay, um, are we looking forward to a rematch between Northville and Birmingham Marion? I mean, that's a possibility. I mean, considering the other side, you got, um, I think Rockford's still in this um, on the other side, but, you know, who knows what's going to happen, really. Birmingham Marion, there's a reason why they're one of the top teams in the state. I mean, there's, there's a, one of the reasons why is, you know, they have came in there and won in all matches, you know? I mean, that's really what it is with Birmingham Marion because the Mustangs, they're a good team, proven team, um, proven experience, um, well-coached. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see what happens in that matchup. Really will be. Um, for Clarkson, play with nothing to lose. I mean, it's similar to Berkeley. Because if you play nothing to lose, everything to gain, you know, that's kind of a good thing. You know what I mean? Basically, that's where you got to go. You know what I mean? It's play with nothing to lose and everything to gain. And also, Coach Smith has been there. I mean, she, she was there with Mount Pleasant. Um, of course, um, they went to the state quarterfinal. Then Clarkson, of course, um, you know, two of the last three years. I mean, obviously, she's been there leading the Wolves, obviously. I mean, like, obviously, um, you know, so when you look at this matchup here, so so Coach Schmidt has been there before for Clarkston. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens um, going forward there. But I think this is going to be a real interesting matchup, to say the least. Um, if Birmingham Marion wins in three, I'd be really shocked. I wouldn't surprise him if it goes four games, maybe the distance. Um, but we will see. I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens there between the um, the uh, Mustangs and the Wolves um, this upcoming um, Tuesday night over up at um, Port Huron at Sinclair Community College. Um, their gym, as I mentioned earlier, very nice gym, by the way. Really nice. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Okay, now let's go from volleyball, obviously, to football. Obviously, the big stories, of course. You got two OA teams remaining. Um and I first let me let me start off with an apology to um Groves. 
Um, I apologize to Groves for going against you last week, um, taking on Livonia Franklin. Um, the Patriots, obviously, with with um really good team, by the way. I mean, like JD Yates at quarterback, um, heck of a running back as well. I mean, you really look at that game and you know, you gotta get credit where credit's due. Um I, I thought when you look at that game against Lavonia Franklin, um, Grove started off hot early. I mean, he took a 7 out in lead. I mean, then they had to deal with Cornell Mavens. I mean, Mavens, you know, he scored a one-yard rush, and then he had a, um, and then he had a, um, then he went off for another big play. It was a, um, you know, and it was a, it was a really big play there, too. I'm looking at the recap of the game, obviously, and, Mabins really had a nice game for Groves. I mean, really did. Um, you know, I mean, there's a reason why he was one of the um top running backs in the um in the Kennington Lakes um this season. Um I mean he is that good. I mean, he really is. I mean, like Mabin, of course, he um he had a seventy two yard rushing touchdown as well. I remember that one. Um, looking at the highlights of that game too, and it was just it was incredible what he did. I mean you know, but I got to get Groves' defense a lot of qu credit here. I mean, second half, held Livonia Franklin to seven points. Um, I got to give the running attack for Groves a lot of credit, too. I mean, Josh Woods, is, Josh Woods has been the answer at running back for Coach Brennan flirting this team. I mean, you really look at what he did. Obviously, Woods, he had a 48-yard touchdown, gave him the lead. And then he went off for an 85-yard touchdown before he got hurt. Um, it looked like after the game he was fine. Um, I know that they said he got hurt during the during the game, um, but it looked like during the interviews and all that he was fine. Um, of course, with Groves, obviously the thing is um, you got to look at with them as you know they don't quit. I mean, you look at obviously with them this season, people are gonna say, well. Do you think the difference was that the OAA White was better than the Kensington Lakes this year? I mean, yeah, I do. I mean, like, I'm not being biased here, but, yeah, you got Belleville there. Um, You got, you know, you got Livonia Franklin. Livonia Franklin was second in that league this year in the Kensington East. Um, The difference in that game was you got to get credit where credit's due. I mean, you know, I mean... <laughs> I thought Caden Hardy played really timely football. Um, he played well. I mean, that's really what it was. Um, and then also the big play of the game, obviously, was in that second half when um, Woods was carrying him offensively. The Groves defense really stepped up, especially late. Um, obviously, Aiden Lewing, a sophomore, um, picked off um, Yates to seal it for Groves and ended up being a big deal. Um, that was the big difference of the game was, you know, Groves was very opportunistic, um, in that game. I mean, I mean, the game really started off Groves up seven, nothing. Then of course, Mabins, um, scored a one yard score, missed a two point conversion, made it seven to six. And then, and then Caden Hardy threw a 42 yard, a 32 yard passing touchdown, 14, six Groves at the time. And then Livonia Franklin answered. Um, you know, two point conversion failed again. It was 14 12 Groves. Um, <laughs> Groves will kick a field goal, make it 17 12. Then Mabins answered that 17 yard score, making it 18 17. Lavoni Franklin that ended up being the score at the half. Um, and then, and then of course, you know, the and then it gets crazy. Of course, Wood scoring the 48 yard touchdown, giving Groves the lead. Um, and then and then the 85-yard touchdown, making it um 32-18 from Woods. I mean, like, Groves was, you know, <laughs> you know, Groves, I, I was impressed with how Groves' offensive line played. I mean, Avery Gotch leading the line. Um, Just really impressed with how Groves' offensive line played in this game. They played phenomenal in this game. I mean, giving Woods the holes, giving him the ability to go score, Um, that says a lot right there. And then... And then um, Yates found Dominic Simpson for a touchdown, 17-yard um, touchdown, making it 32-25 in favor of Groves over Livonia Franklin. Um, 
And then, of course, the craziness at the end with the interception from Luang um, giving the um, Falcons that win. Um, and a lot of people call it an upset. I don't necessarily think it was an upset because you knew how tight that game was going to be between Lavoni Franklin and Groves. I mean, like, I mean, like, um, people are going to say, okay, it's an upset in the state. I mean, like, you know, when you look at the other side of the of the draw, obviously with Dexter, with the way they've been playing, of course, Ian Locke's on um, of course, got to give a shout out to Ian Locke, my um, co-host of OA now, of course, his beloved Dexter Dreadnoughts are in the, um, are in the um, state quarterfinals, um, state semifinals, first time ever. Um, they should get to the state final. Um. You know, so it'll be really interesting to see, but I got to give a shout out to um the Dexter Dreadnoughts. Um, of course, to my co-host, um, Ian Locke. Um, his alma mater is in the um, state semifinals um, for the first time ever in Division Two. So, accomplishment there for that for Groves. I mean, like, accomplishment for Dexter. Um, for Groves, this is, I think, the second time in about four years that they're in the um, state semifinals. I do remember the one year that Seaholm made it in. Um, so a lot of success with the Birmingham School District getting to the state semifinals. Um, that tells you how good both Groves and Seaholm have been in football um, to have like these deep postseason runs. I mean, particularly Groves, especially um, just the way that they've been playing, obviously. Um, and that says a lot right there. Um, heck of an accomplishment for Groves, um, you know, to, you know, coming into the year. I mean, there wasn't a lot riding on them. I know Groves was one of the last teams to get in the playoffs. There was a lot of question with them if they were to get into the playoffs, obviously. But when you look at the Falcons, um, you know, here's a team that really, um, you know, they're clicking at the right time. They're playing well. They're playing together. Um, they're getting good running ga- running back play from Josh Woods. I mean, Kane Hardy's been really good. Um, the offensive line's been really good. The defense has been really opportunistic. Um, that's really how you describe Groves. I mean, obviously they've been in a lot of close games this year. Um, Harper Woods, Rochester, perfect examples. Um, the loss to Oxford, I think was, you know, that was a tough one for them to take early in the year. Um, but right now with Groves, I mean, they're, they're clicking. They're clicking at the right time. This is a team that, you know, it's a dangerous team right now. But, you know, when you look at the matchup coming up for them, this is going to probably be their toughest game of the year um, coming up when they do um, play Warren D. The South. We're going to preview that game in a little bit. Um, it's a difficult matchup for Groves um, taking on the Pilots. But, you know, when you look at Groves right now, this is a team that's rolling on all cylinders. Um, bottom line, I mean, this is a team that, you know, they're playing, they're playing well. They're playing together. Um, bottom line is Falcons are rolling right now. I mean, like, that's really what it is right now when you describe Groves. Um, let's now go from Groves and let's talk about the game of the, the game of the week. Obviously the game on Valley Sports Detroit. This was Clarkson taking on Rochester Adams. Um, this ended up being a doozy of a game. And the storylines of this game really started, you know, obviously when you look at the match of week three with, Clarkson beating Adams 45-35 at Adams. <clears throat> Ever since then, Adams has been on a tear. Um, and then when you look at Clarkson's side, obviously, you know, when you look at them, they've had they've had two losses coming in. I mean, their losses were to um, Davidson earlier in the year and then West Bluefield. Um, obviously, Clarkson eventually had lost to Davidson, um, knocking off the Cardinals' um, I mean, like, in the district final over at Cardinal Stadium, um, winning that one, um, don't remember this. I mean, it was, it was a high scoring game. It was 45, 44, 49, 40 was that score, um, was that score with Davidson and Clarkston, um, behind the play of Ethan Clark, who went absolutely nuts in that game. Um, in this game here, it had a lot of subplots. I mean, obviously, um, you know, the big one was the loss of Mike Hine at quarterback, for Clarkston. Um, so Clarkston went with Stephen Kozak, a senior quarterback. Um, obviously with Kozak, he's seen some playing time. I mean, he played in the West Bloomfield game. He did pretty well. He managed the game pretty well. I thought he played really well in that game. Despite Clarkson falling in that one, 35-27, he really played well in that game. Um, he also played against Oak Park. 
Um, he was very good there. And then, of course, he played in the he played in the Lapeer game. I mean, when you, when you look at that matchup with the Lightning, um, and he had a heck of a game in that one too. I mean, <laughs> people are gonna say, well, Ethan Clark was the um, difference in that game, and yeah, he was. But Kozak, I think, has been playing really good football. So, you know, for Coach Justin Pintar to say, we got two great quarterbacks. I mean, obviously, he does have two good quarterbacks, um, to say the least. So, when you look at the Wolves, I mean, like, yeah, it's not just about Clark. It's not about their offensive line, of course, led by Cole Dillinger. Um, you know, but when you look at this game with Rochester Adams, it's it set up to be a really classic it was just an instant classic between those two teams. Um, early on, I mean, like, early on, if you were a Clarkson fan, it started off real ugly because, you know, when you look at first drive, first drive from scrimmage, obviously it just didn't look, it didn't look great. I mean, like, of course, Clarkson went um, three and out in the first possession. Um, you know, but they had the punt. Adams on their first possession went 84 yards on four plays. Started off with a 45-yard um, rushing touchdown off the, um, off the power read um, from um, Parker Pico to um, Jake Sakar, of course, it gave Adams a 7 nothing lead. Um, I, you knew Clarkson's defense was going to be testing this one. I mean, I, I mean, last week, Clarkson, they gave 40 to Davison. I mean, they gave 40 to Davison prior to that. So you knew they were going to be tested. Um, and then Clarkson went for it on fourth down from the Adams 14, um, found, um, of course, that play went from Kozak. He threw a very nice ball to him. Brody Cozen um, for a 14-yard um, touchdown, tied the game up at seven. Um, and then Adams, you know, and Adams went three and out. Then their defense got a stop, um, you know, and then forced a fumble um, on the previous drive, of course. And, um, then they blocked the punt. Um, Brady pre-scoring. Obviously, we've talked a lot about Brady pre-scoring. Um, I know his older brother, Caden, very well. I know the pre-scoring family very well. Um, he blocked the punt. And then, you know, setting Adams up real nicely. And then he ended up catching a um, 44-yard touchdown from Parker Pico. And it gave Adams the 14-7 lead. Um, Clarkson would respond next drive with the 84-yard um, um, kickoff return for a touchdown from Desmond Stevens. Um, obviously, De I know Desmond Stevens very well. He plays boys basketball for Clarkson. Also, Brady Cozen plays. Um, you know, so when you really look at it here, I mean, Stevens, we know how he's a heck of an athlete, obviously. Um, you know, he took one. I mean, I really wasn't trustworthy at the special teams all season long. But for that play there to take back momentum for Clarkston, that was a big deal for them. Um, the 84-yard touchdown run from Des Desmond Stevens, um, tying the game up at 14. And then Adams went back to there to what helped them out again um, next drive, and that was the power read. Um, but sometimes when you have kickoffs, you know, when you have them um, kickoffs usually, um, it, and, and you have a tired defense, it brings that defense right back out there, and that defense was really tired again. And then Adams went back to the same bread and butter, which was the power read, um, which set up a touchdown from, you know, Logan um, from, um, from Sakar again. He went from 13 yards out. Gave Adams a 21-14 lead. Um, and then Clarkson would answer off a trick play, of course. You know, Steven, Stevens took the handoff, and then he threw a um, halfback pass for a 30-yard passing touchdown to Cole Church, tying the game at 21, and that was your score at halftime. So here comes subplot number two. You know, we talked about, obviously, Steven Kozak for Clarkson, and I'm quarterback, you know, for the in that subplot number one. Here's subplot number two. Tay Pico, um, Parker's um, brother, he ended up getting hurt in this game. I don't know what the injury was, um, but he was out the rest of the game, and that was a big loss for the Adams, for the Rochester Adams defense. Also, Adams is running it, running attack as well. It's a big loss there. Um, you know, so you know, so now you lose a guy who was arguably one of your top power runners, and then obviously one of your best linebackers. So that's a big loss right there for Adams coming into the start of the second half. So, you know, so now we're tied at 21, start second half. Um, Clarkson got a huge defensive stand to start off the second half. And then it wasn't much eventful scoring-wise. Um, 
until he got the fourth quarter. When that, that's when it really got interesting. On um, the start of the fourth quarter, Clarkson took their first lead of the game behind Ethan Clark. Um, of course, Clark was really um, Clark. You know, I mean, he was he. You look at Clark. Obviously, you have 300 yards, 400 yards total offense. Really wasn't that flashy, but Clark ended up taking a um, a, a two yard touchdown, gave Clarkson the first lead of the game. Behind that very talented offensive line, giving Clarkson a 28-21 lead, um, and then it was it was also a milestone moment for Clark too. It was his 64th um, career touchdown, which tied him for Ian with Ian Erickson. Um, we know what Ian Erickson did back in 2018, um, leading the Wolves to a state title, um, and you know, but Rochester Adams had an answer. Pico went back to pre-scoring again. For 34 yards out, but missed the extra point. So it was 28-27 in favor of Clarkson. So Adams' defense then got a stop. Um, you know, and then Pico would answer on a 42-yard rush down the left sideline, down the Clarkson sideline for a touchdown. And it sets up a subplot here. Adams ended up taking a 33-28 lead. Um, and then it sets up the uh, winning drive. Um, where Clarkson drove deep into Adams' territory. Um, and then came the crazy connection, obviously, from, um, you know, from Kozak to um, Death, Death Steffens for the winning um, for the winning touchdown on a fourth down, um, you know, to give um, on an eight-yard score to give um, Clarkson the 30s in the two-point conversion, um, giving Clarkson the 36-33 lead um, with about, Seven tenths of a second to go in the game, um, you know, and that was and that was your game. I mean, Ethan Clark had 212 rushing yards. Parker Pico had um, you know, Parker Pico had a really nice game. He had 182 rushing yards and a touchdown. Um, he completed three passes for 104 yards and three touchdowns. Obviously, all of them the pre scoring. Um, and then, and then you know, two of them the pre scoring, and then um one was a rushing touchdown. We mentioned that. Um, you know, when you look at both these teams, I mean, for Clarkson, we're going to talk to them in a minute. But on Adams' side, obviously, you look at the success the senior class has had. Um, we talk about the state championships in girls' golf and also in um, boys' soccer where Adams is, um, where Adams won both those state titles this year. Um, this senior class has done really good. For Adams, they were really, really good. Um, sharing the OI Red title this year, getting to the Division um, One state championship game last year. Um, obviously, it's not. I mean, like, I mean, what this class has done, what this team has done on the two years under Tony Petrito, that says a lot to what that team, what that program has went through. Um, despite the program um, strength issues that they've had. Um, obviously last year what they had issues with program strength. Um, but credit to where credit's due. I mean, for Adams, I mean, they had an incredible year and they lose so much. I mean, you lose player like Parker Pico, you lose Tay Pico, you lose um, Nick Patera, you lose, um, Hassan Burry up front. I mean, you lose, um, now what helps Adams next year is Brady Prescorn is coming back. Um, but Adams is going to have to replace a lot of talent, and that's not going to be easy next year, especially for for a proud program like Adams. Now, yes, Adams does have some talent in the pipeline, and yes, you know that program at Van Heusen has really started to improve. I mean, but you know when you look at the program that Adams has under Petrito, usually the veer counteracts the counteracts program strength, and that's always been the been true at Rochester Adams. I mean, the Veer always counteracts it. And, you know, and Petrino runs that Veer to perfection over at Rochester Adams. I think I call Adams, you know, I've seen teams that run the Veer so much. I mean, in the OAA, you know, we're blessed to have two teams that run severe and Seaholm and Rochester Adams. I mean, they run it exclusively. I mean, yes, I know Grand Ledge, they run the Veer over there, but Adams, I think, to me, in my opinion, is the master of this offense. I mean, so I think with Adams next year, yes, I expect him to take a step back next year. But they're gonna be always they're gonna be there because they're Adams. You know, what I mean they're gonna be in the thick of it. Um 
because that's always been their DNA for Adams. So my thoughts on this game really was, you know, heck of a game by both teams. Both teams played awesome football. It was a heck of a game for both teams. Bottom line is, give credit where credit's due. I mean, Adams ended up winning a heck of a game, a heck of a, um, you know, heck of a game between two teams, two proud red teams. Um, And, you know, I think there's going to be a lot more to come when you look at the, um, the future of both programs. But Adams does lose a lot next year. So that's something to really watch for. Um, let's look at the two games coming up for Groves and for Clarkston. Um, let's go Groves first. Um, I mentioned earlier in the Groves segment, we talked about, you know, when you, when you talk about biggest game of the year. And for Groves, they have not been able to get to Ford Field. I mean, they've had to run in some really good proven powerhouse teams, whether it's been Warren D. The Sal, whether it's been Detroit Martin Luther King, you know, I mean, like, it's been a, it's been difficult for Groves. And now they got to go in and take on the defending Division II state champions in Warren D. The Sal. And the Pilots are absolutely loaded. I mean, they got a heck of a quarterback and a Brody Dodgebotch um, throwback. Um, running game solid. Defense is solid. Their only loss of the year was a 43-42 loss to Birmingham Brother Rice back at Wayne State. Um, of course, Birmingham, of course, Warren D. The South, they play all their home games over at um at Wayne State, which is really interesting because, you know, obviously when you look at the Catholic League, I mean, like, you know, Detroit Catholic Central has their own field. You look at obviously the um you look at um, you know, Birmingham Brother Rice, they they play their games, I think, at Lawrence Tech. Um, and then you look at Warren D. LaSalle. They play their games at Wayne State. Um, and then, you know, UOD Jesuit, you know, sometimes they play their games at Hazel Park. Um, but they have their own field. Um, so when I really look at this game here on paper, everything doesn't favor the, the Falcons in this one. Gross has got to come into this game with the same mindset they did against Savoni Franklin, which is nobody's given us a chance. Nobody's given us an opportunity. You know, we can, we can get this done. For Groves to win this game, everybody has to chip in. Everybody has to contribute, whether it's Caden Hardy, whether it's Zach Rogers. I mean, you just can't rely on Josh Woods to carry you. And your defense is going to certainly get tested in this game. I mean, you look at the OAA. The kryptonite for the OAA has always been, for some reason, been Warren the South. It always has been. Because when you look at the pilots, I mean, like, you know, let's not forget. 2020, they eliminated Oak Park from the playoffs. They, and it was a crazy game. I mean, Oak Park had chances to win that game. Uh, but Warren the South ended up coming in there, you know, found a way. Took it to overtime. Game went to overtime. Oak Park made a mistake through an interception. Warren DSL um, contributed, of course, with drawback. Um, scoring the winning touchdown. Um, and beating Oak Park. Um, <laughs> for the OA, it's always been you got to go through Warren DSL. And this is a tough matchup, I think, for Groves. Because, for Coach Brendan Flutter. Because you have not gotten the state final. Groves has not gotten there. I don't think in their state, in their program history. And I know that a lot of people say about Groves is if you want to be the team that can go in there and get the state final for the first time in school history, you got to win. You got to knock off the champ. You got to knock off the champs. You know, to learn from Rick Fleur, and I think this is a good statement if you're Coach Brendan Flaherty. Um, and I hope people at Groves Nation. I know athletic director Tom Flynn there very well, but here's a quote that I think um, I think Groves coach Brendan Flaherty needs to learn here and also his players. It's a quote from Rick Flynn. To be the man, you got to beat the man. I mean, that's really what it is. That's really what it is, you know, for for Groves in this match against Warren D. South. I mean, it's a difficult matchup, to say the least. It's going to be a tough matchup, to say the least. Um... It's, I mean, like, Warren D. South got a lot of proven Division One players. They got an Illinois commit up front, um, up on the line. Um, their, their defensive end's going to Illinois. Um, I'm not sure where Drillback is going. I think he's going to, I mean, like, I'm not sure where he's going for college and all that. But if you're Groves, you're going to have to have everybody chip in. 
Everybody's got to chip in for this to work. I mean, yes, you're going to have a little bit of an advantage because the game is at Troy Athens. Um, yes, Troy Athens is an OA member, but you haven't played at Troy Athens in a while. And, you know, so I'm curious to see what type of advantage will Troy Athens be for Groves. And <clears throat> obviously, you know, you're taking on a deal, Lauren D. LaSalle team, you know, I mean, you look at, obviously, Troy Athens, of course, um, they usually host Division I games, obviously, um, but, you know, this year, they're hosting D2 games. I mean, you look at, you look at T, look at Rochester this year, they're hosting a D4 matchup between, um, you know, they're hosting a D4 matchup. I mean, like, you know, so I'm curious to see how that one's gonna be over there. Um, I gotta remember the matchup. It's Goodrich against, um, I gotta remember who the other one was that they were playing. But I know Goodrich is in that game over at Rochester. Um, so, but they're playing over there um, on that Saturday as well. Um, and then on the flip side, you have, um, I, I mean, Dexter's a team that's, Dexter's been playing inspired football. And I've been saying this about Ian Locke's team for a long time. Cole Cabana is a really good running back. He might be one of the best players ever to go down in Dexter history. I was really impressed what he did against Midland. I mean, Dexter played outstanding football against Midland and earning their first ever regional championship. They earned their first district championship when they knocked off South Lion. So if you're my co-host Ian Locke right now, he's got to be just so geeked up, so impressed. I mean, like, that's how for his dreadnoughts, for the, um, because I know how proud he is with Dexter football. And... I think Dexter's got a great chance to get to Ford Field this weekend. I think they got a great chance. There's a reason why they're number one in the state. Warren D. The South's number two in the state right now in Division Two. That says a lot right there. It really does. But back to Groves and um, Warren D. The South. It's a difficult match for Groves. I would love to see Groves um, at Ford Field this year. I really do. Do I think do they have a chance against Warren D. The South? I think they do. I mean, they're going to have to play well. They're going to have to probably play the best game of the year. I mean, people in the media are going to say, well, Groves has got no chance. People are going to say Groves has got absolutely no chance. They're going to get killed by Warren Diesel. I think Groves will hang with them. I, I think they can. Um, It's a difficult matchup, um, but I think Groves has got a chance here. Do I think they're going to win on Saturday afternoon? Probably not. Um. I just think Warren D.S.L. has got too much, um, too much experience, too much, um, too much. And I think it's going to be really difficult to say the least here. Um, I'm going to take the pilots in this one over Groves. Um, I think it's going to be closer than people think. I think it's going to be maybe like, um, but don't be surprised if, if, if it comes down to a one score game late in the fourth quarter, Groves has a chance to win. I wouldn't be surprised if they just beat Josh Woods or King Hardy comes a hero. You think about it. If Groves can overcome this monkey in their back, then I think they have a great chance to get the state final. I mean, we'll see. I mean, we will see. I mean, like Warren D. South has been the OA's biggest problem, you know, the last few years for a Division II team to get to the state final. You would have to go through Warren D. South, and that's a really difficult matchup to say the least. So, we're going to see what happens there. We're going to see. I think it's going to be really interesting. To say the least, it'll be really interesting. Okay, now let's look at the other matchup. Um, let's go to Division I. Um, obviously, we got, um, you got Belleville, Detroit, Cast Tech playing on a Friday night at 7 o'clock on Valley Sports Detroit. I mean, Detroit, Cast Tech's role has been really impressive. Um, knocking off now. Um, you went to West Bloomfield, win there. You knocked off A&T, and then you knock off Macomb, Dakota. Heck of a heck of a path for Detroit Cast Tech, and now you bring Belleville into the fold. Belleville top team in the state in Division One. Um, obviously Jermaine Crowell, the issues he's been having. Um, so we're gonna see this one here. I mean, like, don't be surprised, you know, in this one here. I, I like Detroit Cast Tech in this game against Belleville. I really do, because I think Detroit Cast Tech. I think they're gonna do is. Run them. They're going to run. I mean, like, they have a really good running attack. I mean, their quarterback play is solid. 
Um, defense has been very opportunistic. I think they got a good chance here in this game. I really do. Um, let's go to the game that we're going to be talking about a lot, and that's going to be um, Clarkson taking on Caledonia. Um, this will be a really interesting matchup. It's a Saturday afternoon game at 1 o'clock at East Lansing. I think East Lansing makes... I think East Lansing makes the perfect sense here for this game because, one, it's in the middle. Caledonia is near Grand Rapids. Of course, we know where Clarkson's at. You know, why not make the um, trip down I-96 um, to East Lansing? You know, it's a perfect site for a neutral site game. It really is. Um, East Lansing just got a new turf field, a new football stadium, obviously. So, <coughs> it makes sense. It really does. It makes sense for this game. Um, a lot of interesting storylines to this one. Caledonia's went east before. I mean, Caledonia's coming in with a lot of confidence. Good quarterback. I mean, and um, I think it's Mason McKenzie's their quarterback. Um, just, you know, what, what the Caledonia's done this postseason has been just insane. I mean, they knocked off Rockford. The way they played in that game was low scoring game. Um, it was a 17, it was um it was 3-3, got the overtime, um, then 6-6, Rockford took the lead 13-6, and then um Caledonia scores, and then they decide to go for two and win that game. 14-13, um, stunning Rockford, um, avenging their only loss of the year, um, which was incredible with um how they played in that game. Now, Caledonia, as I mentioned, they've been East before. They went to Ron Holland Field, North Farmington. They took on the Raiders. They put up 68 on them. They put up 68 on the Raiders. And it was not close. It was 68 to, I think it was 68 to 21, I think was the score. But that game was not close at all. I mean, Caledonia, we know the talent they have. We know they're very good. We know that this is a team that, you know, they're solid. They're dominant. You know, and then they took on Grand Ledge. They had some issues with Grand Ledge early. But Grand Ledge lost both their quarterbacks. And that was the end of that. Um, where um, Caledonia won that one. I think that was 35-21. to 21. Heading into this game with Clarkston. Um, this is the first meeting between the two teams. I mean... I am very curious to see how Caledonia handles Ethan Clark. Um, Cal, I think Ethan Clark's probably going to be the best running back that Caledonia, the Fighting Scots have seen all year long. Even, you know, when they take on the Ottawa Kent competition, you look at that conference. The Ottawa Kent's got a ton of good teams in there. You look at teams like Rockford. You look at Muskegon. You look at Muskegon Mona Shores. Holland West Ottawa. You got... um. You know, Rockford, obviously, you have, um, you have, um, East Kentwood, Grand Haven, um, you know, East Grand Rapids. I mean, that, those type of teams, there's about 60 schools in that conference. I mean, it is a big conference, ranging from teams in Muskegon County to Kent County, Ottawa, the uh, Ottawa County. I mean, even into Van Buren County. I mean, it is a big conference really is um the match i'm curious to see what this matchup is who is clarkson gonna go at quarterback are they gonna go mike hine or are they gonna go with them steven kozak i mean i don't see really anything wrong to see where clarkson goes with this matchup and then i'm curious to see how caledonia covers um desmond stephens i mean like obviously <laughs> what Des what stephens did against um Against Adams. That says a lot right there. <laughs> and that was an incredible game. I mean, it really was. Um, so, I don't know how good Caledonia is to take on this Wolves team. But I think this is going to be the best line they've seen all year long. Um, obviously, dealing with Cole Dillinger. Um, dealing with the line up front. Um, so, really, when you look at this matchup here, the travel advantage is negated. I mean, because both teams have to travel, you know, like pretty much the same amount of miles. I mean, you look at Caledonia, obviously down I-96 coming from the west, and then Clarkson going I-96 from the east. Um, 
So I'm curious to see how this matchup's going to be um, between these two teams. I'm really curious. I mean, like, because I looked at everybody in the media. They're, everybody in the media are saying, well, it's going to be a tight game. It's going to be a close game. I mean, it's going to be a heck of a game between these two teams. Um, I've seen Caledonia play. Yes, they're very good. There's no doubt about it. I think in the game against North Farmington, I, I just think that the, um, the North Farmington game, it kind of showed how good Caledonia was. But it also showed how, how, t how, um, how North Farmington really struggled. Um, and they did struggle this year under Coach John Hurston. They really did struggle. Caledonia is well coached. They got a good quarterback. Um, really makes, really controls everything. Tight end solid. Um, running back's good. I mean, and let's not forget Caledonia, the most of their, their um, team is junior heavy. I mean, obviously, I mean, McKenzie is a senior. I know he's been getting mentioned for player defense. I mean, he's been getting mentioned for player of the year. Same with Ethan Clark, obviously with Clarkson. Um, so I think it's going to come down to is who wins the different styles and clash. Which team shows different style? I mean, like obviously, both teams like to like to run the um run their offense off the um pistol, obviously. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see what happens in this game. Um. I think whoever shows their will in this game will win. And when I look at the game here on paper, I mean, people are going to say, well, Caledonia, <laughs> obviously, you know, been battle-tested, <clears throat> knocked off Rockford, big deal. I mean, like, that's the big deal there. Um, but Clarkson's knocked off. They played, Clarkson's played in one of the toughest conferences in the state of Michigan. The Red. The OA Red. It is a vicious conference. You're going against the likes of, of Lake Orion, Oxford, Stony Creek, Rochester Adams, West Bloomfield, all on a consistent basis. And then your crossovers this year. You played South Arson Tech. You played Oak Park. You played Lapeer this year. I mean, and then you look at the postseason. I mean, you, you played against Lapeer. You played against Davison. Then he just played Rochester Adams. <laughs> it is not that has not been real easy for Rochester Adams. It really hasn't been. No, for Clarkson, it really hasn't been with that schedule. <clears throat> but here they are. <laughs> here they are. And I think this is going to be a very tight game between these two teams. <clears throat> I think Clarkston wins this game because of their offensive line. I don't trust Caledonia up front. I think Caledonia will get some points in this game because I don't trust Clarkson's defense one bit in this one. Even though, you know, because, but the defense of Clarkson's really concerning. me, really is. Caledonia can score points. <clears throat> but on the flip side, Clarkson can score points against Caledonia. <clears throat> I know Caledonia's a hard-hitting team. <laughs> Clarkson's got enough depth to match up with Caledonia. Yes, you have Ethan Clark. I don't think they've seen a running back like Ethan Clark. I think Desmond Steffens could have a big game here again. I really do. But Caledonia will know about it. Caledonia will know a lot about Steffens. So it's kind of like pick your poison. You know, because Kozak, I'm not sure what his running ability is. Hein, we know what he can do. So that's going to be the key is where if Hine plays in this game, but who knows what Coach Jefferson Business is going to do? Who knows? If he can alternate quarterbacks, that's fine. But I know that he's going to probably say Mike Hines is a starter. And I have no issue with that at all. So we'll see what happens there. But I got Clarkson winning this game because of obviously Ethan Clark, the offensive line. Clarkson's got a simple formula. I got a simple formula. And who knows what will happen next? You know, who knows? But I like Clarkson in this one over um, over um, Caledonia and then over at um, over at East Lansing and then over at Troy Athens. I got Warren D. Sal knocking off Groves. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens there going forward there. Final thoughts. Um, we'll see what happens. Wish everybody the best of luck in volleyball and football this week. Um, also the starter girls basketball tryouts 
start today, which is really interesting. Um, I'm gonna keep a close eye on that. Um, I will release my top um top ten um top ten sometime this week or next week. Um, I'm already working on the previews for girls basketball coming up. Of course, boys basketball coming up a week later. So we'll see what happens there. Um, we're gonna talk a lot about basketball during the week. So we'll see what happens there. All right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at SaginawBay4650 at blogspot.com. Also, on the ON TV blog as well, I will post the previews up there as well in the next few weeks. So we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, everybody, we're going to take care here. God bless, and I'll see you all next week, everybody. See you next week, everybody, and see you, and see you, in, see you next week. God bless, everybody.